I know this whole thing that you were saying on your research. I was wondering if you'd ever heard of um, Dr. Frances Press Wilson. No. She's an author, and she has an interesting concept, an interesting take on where AIDS originated. You might want to look at that. I was going to ask you what you thought of it, but now that you have heard of her, I'm asking you to look her up, Dr. Frances Press Wilson. I'll do so. Okay. Uh, no, this picture is me being arrested and taken for another nickel ride um, when I uh, handcuffed myself to the Liberty Bell. <laughs> oh, a nickel ride uh, is when you are put in a police van, which is what that was. Uh, you have your, your handcuffed behind your back, uh, and there are no rails in the van, and they make quick turns and they go over bumpy. Uh, potholes. Uh, in other words, they're trying to bang you up as much as they can, um, and therefore they can't be blamed for it because you're in the back of the ladder. Why did you, why did you handcuff yourself with a liberty belt? Uh, in, my theory was, which goes back to the TV set, was that I would do almost anything and everything to make sure that LGBT issues were in the media. And I pulled some incredibly crazy stunts. At one point, I uh, put a neck brace around my neck and sealed the door uh, of the United Way building because they wouldn't fund gay organizations. And I made sure the back door was locked. This was before anyone was in the building in the morning. And uh, when they tried to take me out, I said, uh, or people around me said, you better not touch that, you'll break his neck. Next year, United Fund funds gay organizations. <laughs> Well, but he also chose a Liberty Bell for a particular reason. Um, well, because uh, there were demonstrations, I had learned by that point that there were demonstrations outside in Bennett's Hall. And I also think, you know, I'm patriotic. I happen to be, love being an American. You know, and I believe the gay rights movement is an extension of, you know, the Declaration of Independence and uh, what we stand for and the Constitution. And therefore, it connected all of those things for me, me personally. And I live about six blocks away. <laughs> uh, first of all, I thank um, my grandchild. <laughs> yeah. This is what this is Chip Red, everybody, one of my gay great front brothers. Please give him a welcome. And they are very different as children, that's all I have to say to us older people that they're proud of them and what you accomplish. My question is a sort of a publishing question to both of you. Randy um, Schultz uh, uh, told me that patient zero was not his idea. It was the idea of his editor, and his editor insisted that they have some sort of book for that story. And I wondered with David's book called Stonewall Riots, which is some controversy about the title, if, if that was imposed on him or if that was his choice. And you, if at any point you had this wonderful relationship with an editor, if at any point was there a little butting of heads about something? Um, we had none whatsoever. He was, in fact, the one area I thought he would take out, or, or try to take out, but I wouldn't let him if he did, would be the Harvey Milk reference. You were around during that period of time, so you know that story. Um, and he never even mentioned it to me, which I thought was a very good sign. Because I thought when he read the manuscript the first time, he would not take it because of that story. Because it's really not a very nice story about Harvey. Uh, and Harvey's like a god in our community these days. Um, no, the only thing that he did with me uh, was have me rearrange the style of the book chronologically. As far as Patient Zero goes, I know that that's a big controversy now, uh, but I have nothing to add to it. Because I was not around when they, and I didn't, I haven't discussed it. Randy was a friend of mine. I loved Randy. Um, and Michael, I've just met. Um, and Randy's gone, so I can't discuss it with him now. Well, the, uh, the idea, was, the title was my idea for my title, and I had no, no pushback from St. Martin's Press. Um, the, the story of Patient Zero is a very uh, long, involved story. And actually, Patient Zero was in the original manuscript. What changed? was that uh, uh, Michael Denny has told me this story several times, was that he was afraid that when the book came out, it would be ignored by the media. And uh, his, his, his publicist told him, 
he could not figure out a way to get the, the book noticed. Uh, and that was the reason Michael wanted the book written was because AIDS was so ignored in the media and by the, you know, all the establishment uh, forces in our society. So Michael had a friend uh, who was a publicist, uh, not his, his paid publicist, in the, in the, uh, at the uh, St. Martin's Press. And he gave it to that friend who was gay who worked for somebody else. And the person said, well, let me take a look at the book and I'll see if I have an idea. And it was his idea to emphasize that, that the patient zero story was already written in the book. It was part of the history. But the publicist had the idea that if you would put this out before the press, that would keep, keep get the press's attention. And uh, Michael Tomey had to argue with Randy Schultz for weeks. Randy Schultz did not want this to be publicity. But, you know, Michael felt that, you know, his friend was right. So he, he after weeks of arguing, Randy Schultz agreed to use that approach to get publicity for the book by emphasizing that story, which was already in the book, and uh, it worked. So this is a very, very long story, and Michael has taken, uh, you know, generally, uh, Michael, in terms of, uh, and the band played on, is a ex very extraordinarily good example of no good deed goes unpunished. That book did so much to help uh, the movement, and uh, it was real eye-opener to me. I always say, it reminds me of when I read The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. When I read The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, I could not believe, talking about Adolf Hitler, how many chances there were, gorgeous chances, to stop Hitler, and nobody would do it. They kept on caving in to us cowardly in a way, you know, politicians, the press, everybody, time after time after time. And when I read and the band played on, we saw how many chances there were to stop the AIDS epidemic, but politics was driving it. So that was a tremendous uh, um, contribution that both Randy Schultz and Michael Denny made to our movement and helped save our movement by getting that book published. In your title, Mark, uh, and When I Dance, is it Rosa Luxemburg or is it keeping up with the rhythm of the Andy Andy title? They didn't like the uh, <laughs> John, you're talking the original title that I wanted? Yes. You're pushing you're pushing G back in. I wanted to be yeah, that's the fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, uh, thank God they talked me out of it. I now agree with you. That was for uh, the second title I wanted, which none of them liked again, uh, was It's Not Me, It's a Circus Around Me. So I actually don't know where, do you remember where that came from? I mean, I can tell you what, it, what it's referred to in the book. Um, so, if you, when you read the book, because you're all going to read it, right? And those of you who don't have it, are going to buy it over there. Um, when you read the book, you'll notice I go from one ex ex adventure to another adventure to another. It's full of adventures all throughout the book. And then, and sometimes I'm arrested, sometimes someone dies, uh, sometimes there's this, you know, so there's always something that happens, sometimes not always good. Um, and at the end of the, the book, uh, I'm invited by the president to bring my husband and dance at the White House. Nice. And then I danced. So it basically is this 18-year-old kid standing outside Stonewall, thinking, living in a $6 room at the YMCA, no job, no place to live, thinking he has no prospects in his life, and literally saying, as all this is unfolding in front of me, I'm going to be a gay actress. Although those words, what did we call it then? You know. Whatever, what we, you know, um, and, and thinking, okay, my life's going to amount to nothing, but at least I'll be doing the work that my grandmother and family have always done. I'll be fighting for, you know, the future. And never did I expect I'd be where I'm at today. Um, it's, a, it's a shock to me. That's good. Okay, this is a question from a friend who couldn't be here tonight because it is World AIDS Day and there are plenty of other things happening in town. But he did uh, send in a text message to, to uh, ask this question, so I'm just going to read it. Uh, as a member of CBST's as a member of CBST's AIDS committee, I decided to go to Brent's event, that being Brent Nicholson Earl from American Run for the Base. Try to get a chance to ask David and Mark what the patrons of the Stonewall were like. Uh, trans, female, black, drag, etc. Uh, versus the people who were not in the Stonewall, or were not patrons of the Stonewall, but 
rioted outside on the first, second, and third nights. Do I take first or do you want me to take it first? Yeah, we'll ask the question. You can go first. Yeah. Okay. Um, the people were, who were, okay, first, inside Stonewall was full of all types of people, the entire gamut of the gay community. But once the action started, that's when the crowd shifted. Anybody, anybody who had a job or uh, who was in the closet, which was most of the community, they ran. And they ran as far away as they possibly can, could. The only people who stayed were the people basically who lived on Christopher Street in the area. Uh, trans people, kids on the street, people like me who didn't have any future to look forward to. We were the only ones who stayed. You know. Um, and that's who was there. Now, what most people don't talk about, and I think is even more important, are the nights after Stonewall. That's when people who began to organize and create a community got together. I mean, that to me is important. I mean, you know, if you want some particulars, I'll, go to the, I'll uh, bow to this man over here. He can give you more particulars on it. But from a bird's eye view, it hopefully made a few people uh, radicalized um, or being able to see the future, or in my case, it gave me a future. 